Hagstrite would like to share some knowledge with you that will help you to get the most out of your slit lamp camera. The following subjects are covered in this movie. How is the image created? Importance of focus. Types of illumination. Importance of the illumination angle. Tips from our experts. To begin, let's define what slit lamp imaging is. Slit lamp imaging is the art of bringing the information of a dynamic stereoscopic clinical examination into a static two-dimensional still image. How is the slit lamp image created? It all starts in the illumination head of the slit lamp. The light passes the optics, is diverted by the mirror and illuminates the patient's eye. From there it passes the optics, is divided by the beam splitter and reaches the camera sensor and the examiner's eyes. The camera captures the image of only one light path. Always keep in mind on which side your camera captures the images. This section is dedicated to the importance of focus. A common issue in slit lamp imaging is that the observer has a perfectly sharp view while the images are out of focus. This is because the observer's eye can compensate a misalignment of the instrument, but the camera cannot. To help overcome this problem, Hagstreit has developed a special imaging crosshair eyepiece. A crosshair reticule indicates the correct adjustment of the eyepieces, thus a perfect focus for the camera is guaranteed. If by looking through the eyepieces the crosshair is in focus but the view is out of focus, you need to move the slit lamp into focus. If by looking through the eyepieces the crosshair is out of focus but the view is in focus, you need to adjust your eyepieces. If the crosshair and the view are in focus, you can be sure that the captured image is going to be perfectly in focus. To ensure that your images are always in focus, use the Hogstrite Imaging Crosshair eyepiece or simply look at the screen before capturing the image. This section gives an overview of four main types of illumination. Diffuse illumination, direct focal illumination, direct focal fine slit illumination, and retro illumination. Diffuse illumination. Diffuse illumination provides even light distribution. For comparison, the same eye with direct focal illumination. And here, the diffuse illuminated version again. Diffuse illumination is ideal when documentation of a wider view is required. To set out the slit lamp for diffuse illumination, open the slit completely. Bring the diffuser in position and use a small amount of background illumination. Hagstrite offers two versions of background illumination, a pivoting version that allows for optimal positioning and a fixed version that is attached to the same axis as the mirror. Direct focal illumination. Direct focal illumination is a bright focused light. For comparison, the same eye with diffuse illumination. Note how the direct focal illumination enhances the sharpness of the new vessels growing into the cornea. Direct focal illumination increases the contrast and in many cases can make more detail visible. It has the ability to show structure and detail in media that would appear transparent under diffuse illumination. To set up the slit lamp for direct focal illumination, flip down the diffuser, choose a slit in the required length and width, and add a small amount of background illumination if required. Direct Focal Fine Slit Illumination Direct Focal Fine Slit Illumination delivers a narrow high-intensity slit beam. For comparison, the same eye with diffuse illumination only, and here again with Direct Focal Fine Slit Illumination. Fine slit illumination can be used to reveal structure in detail within the semi-transparent media of the eye. It also assists with locating the level where pathological changes occur, and finally allows visualization of topography. To set up the slit lamp for direct focal fine slit illumination, choose a slit which is thinner than 0.2 mm. Turn up the slit illumination power to the maximum. Select a wide angle between illumination and microscope and add a small amount of background illumination if required. For optical sections, an angle of 90 degrees provides best depth of focus. Retro illumination. Retro illumination uses light reflected from the retina coming towards the microscope. 
for comparison the same eye with direct focal illumination, and here again with retro illumination. This can allow excellent visualization of pathologies that occur in the lens, the iris, and sometimes the cornea. To set up the slip lamp for retro illumination, position the illumination tower coaxial to the microscope. Select a moderate beam width of between 1 and 2 millimeters. Adjust the length of the beam according to the size of the pupil. Decentering the slit beam towards the pupil margin optimizes the illumination and removes unwanted reflections from the center of the image. Keep in mind, the four main types of illumination are between two extremes, a very soft and even light in diffuse illumination and a very bright high contrast light in fine slit illumination mode. This section highlights the importance of the illumination angle. The issue is that digital slit lamp imaging is static and two-dimensional, while the observation is dynamic and three-dimensional. A solution to overcome this issue is to use a large illumination angle. A large illumination angle adds 3D information to your image. This image has been captured with a small illumination angle of about 30 degrees between microscope and illumination. It nicely shows the color of the iris, but it does not give any depth information. The same eye has been captured with a large illumination angle of 85 degrees. Now the shadow casting exposes 3D information of the tumor. The use of a large illumination angle is also beneficial in transparent media. Optical sections with large illumination angles reveal more details and can improve the depth of focus. This image has been captured with a relatively small illumination angle of about 40 degrees. It shows that there is some pathology affecting the inferior cornea. The same eye has been captured with a large illumination angle of about 85 degrees. This image reveals that the inferior cornea is thickened and that there is pathology affecting both anterior and posterior surfaces. This last section provides a number of general imaging tips from our experts. First of all, select optimal optical magnification. This way you benefit from the full size of the camera sensor. Always pay attention to the image on the screen, not only the clinical view. Keep in mind which beam path is recorded by your camera to avoid unwanted shadowing and unwanted reflexes. Add background illumination to improve the orientation within the image. Use very narrow slit illumination with maximum slit intensity for optical sections, otherwise you will lose detail. Here are an example of a quite narrow slit where no detail in the cornea is visible. Here an example of a very narrow slit which reveals the different layers of this healthy cornea. Use Aperture Control. The Hagstrite IM900 imaging module provides aperture control. Use a large aperture if little light is available and a small aperture if deep depth of field is required. Here an example of an image with shallow depth of field. Here the same eye with deep depth of field. To get the most out of your slit lamp imaging solution, use the optimal type of illumination. Always check the eyepieces to ensure accurate focus. Increase the information value of your images and consider the tips from our experts. For additional information, we welcome you to visit our website.